Hi everyone and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. In this video we're going to be going through active transport for GCSE Biology. So if you are new here then click subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any of the other top tip videos or theory videos. So let's start by looking at the definition of active transport. It's the movement of substances from a dilute solution to a more concentrated solution. Or in other words, it's going against the concentration gradient. So if we have a look at this diagram over here, the dilute solution has lots of water molecules, but only two of our solute molecule. And that could be sugar, it could be salt, whatever the solute is that has dissolved. And in comparison, the concentrated solution has very little water compared to the solute available. So when we say it's going against the concentration gradient, we mean we're going from an area where there's very little of that solute to where there is a lot. And the way you use the term in the mark scheme is dilute solution to more concentrated solution. Now, because this is going against the concentration gradient, energy is needed to help move those molecules to the concentrated side. So that's the definition. And there are two key examples that you need to know for AQA. The first one is that active transport is how plants absorb mineral ions from the soil into their root hair cells. So the roots here on those roots, there are root hair cells, which are the cells that have that long protruding section. And the soil itself doesn't actually have a very concentrated solution of these mineral ions especially compared to the concentration already within the cell. But the plant still needs lots of mineral ions continuously. And that's because those mineral ions are really important for the plant to be able to grow healthily. And that is why active transport occurs, to make sure those mineral ions are moved against the concentration gradient into the plant. The second example is in animals, for example, in humans, in our guts. Sugar is absorbed into the bloodstream from your gut by active transport. And it's a similar idea. Even though in your gut, compared to your blood, you might have a low concentration of sugar and a high concentration of sugar in your blood, we still need to be able to move every last bit of sugar from your gut into the blood. And that's because sugar is constantly being used for respiration in your cells. And without respiration, your cells wouldn't be able to survive. Now, the final thing you could be asked linked to active transport, but also diffusion and osmosis. And if you haven't seen my two videos on those, I'll link them at the end. You could be asked to compare similarities and differences between these three. So I've got this Venn diagram just to demonstrate. So diffusion, that is how an example is how gases exchange a leaf. Osmosis is only the movement of water and it's by diffusion. It's across a partially permeable membrane. Active transport is the only one that requires energy. It's the only one that demonstrates how mineral ions move into the root hair cell. And it's the only one that goes against the concentration gradient. So those are all our differences. Some of the similarities then, diffusion and osmosis are both passive, meaning they do not require energy. They are both also moving from a high to a low concentration. With osmosis, by high we mean a high concentration of water to a lower concentration of water. For diffusion and active transport, it involves the transport of the solute, because we said osmosis is the movement of water. And then all three of them are types of movement. So that's the only thing that all three have in common. So that is it for what you need to know about active transport. If you found this helpful, please give this video a thumbs up.